Everyone out there, welcome to Randall's Weather Page. Do me a favor, go down, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and make sure that you're the first to see my videos whenever I put them out. Make sure to share them with your family, your friends, your co-workers, so you can keep everybody in the know what's going on. Today, back to the tropics again, and I got a lot to show you, so let's get into it right now. Number one, this is the uh, month of September overall average is what is likely more likely and most likely in the prevailing tracks when it comes to tropical depressions, storms, and hurricanes. So you have two general prevailing tracks. One starts out in the lower Caribbean and then moves up into the Gulf of Mexico and either goes towards, you know, the east coast of the Gulf of Mexico, central Gulf of Mexico, or western Gulf of Mexico. The second is storms that come off of Africa, and uh, we call that the African wave train, and they form, start forming out here by the Carbo Verde Islands, and then they either move towards Florida, towards the East Coast, or they move over towards Bermuda. So this is September's most likely tracks, and this is based off of all the history that NOAA has. Name storms so far. We've gone. We've been through Omar. Next up is Paulette, Renee, and Sally. Notice after that is Teddy, Vicky, Wilfred, and then we start into the Greek alphabet. It is getting more and more likely that this will be a Greek alphabet year. We'll have that many name storms. So active season when it comes to name storms. Let's go into the MJO. Your MJO is your Madden Julian oscillate, oscillation. I love looking at this because this kind of gives you an overall look of the atmosphere uh, as far as the MJO is uh, concerned. With the MJO in your reds, your browns, uh, this is uh, sinking air. So the atmosphere is not as favorable as it could be for thunderstorm development uh, or tropical storm development. Notice that that is over the Pacific and moving into the Gulf of Mexico, starting to make its way out into the Atlantic. That is as of today. Notice this area over here. It's, this starts over here and then moves over here. This is a uh, rising air, and with rising air, it is the overall atmosphere is more conducive to thunderstorm activity and to tropical storm development. Now, just because this area is over the Pacific and starting to get into the Atlantic does not mean that storms cannot happen. Storms can still happen. It just, the atmosphere is not as favorable as it could possibly be. Over here, the atmosphere is as favorable as it could possibly be for thunderstorm development, tropical storm development, and of course you have two cyclones that are going on right now over in the Pacific. So, uh, over here. So, Let's get into week one forecast. So that would be tomorrow through September the 11th. Notice that the sinking air is still over the Americas and moving more into the Atlantic Ocean. And then over here in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, this is moving further east. Week two forecast, September the 12th through the 18th. The um, sinking air is now fully entrenched over the main development region, the Atlantic Ocean right here. But notice your rising air is now moving further east and coming towards the Americas again. So if you just extrapolate this out, week three and week four, your rising air, your more favorable atmosphere will be back over towards the Americas and the Atlantic Ocean. So we've got a period of activity right now that is happening even during the uh, sinking air phase. And that is through basically the 18th. You'll probably take it out to like the 20th, 24th of September. But then your more favorable phase comes over week three, week four, and possibly week five out. So you're talking about the end of September, the beginning of October. And that means that after this round of activity is done um, in the Atlantic, your atmosphere is going to be favorable again for even more development. So uh, peak season is here and it's going to continue. Uh, the wave train will continue. Peak season will continue. 
um, we've got a long way to go uh, in the um, tropical area for this year. Here is uh, the moving IR image. Uh, I'm really watching this area right here to see if there, if the National Hurricane Center starts putting, uh, taking a look at it because it has really looked nice. It is a wave. It's still elongated, but this area really looks nice. You've got Omar in a second area up here that they're watching, and then you have three areas in the main development region that are being watched. Let me move over. Let me show you. Here's the areas. There's Omar right there area that they're looking at right here but it's more extra tropical so i'm not really worried about these two these two are moving northeast uh what i'm watching is right here you know i want to move over and go into my radar omega app if you do not have the radar omega app and you're a weather um, nerd or weather lover like I am, uh, I highly suggest it. You do have to pay for it, but there's so many different options in this. Um, satellite, models, uh, radar, uh, there's 3D that you can get in here, and also there's tropical that you can get in here. Love the Radar Omega app because it can show you so much, so much. So let's Take a look at it. This is Omar, Omar's path. Look, is heading northeast, almost due north. This is the other area that they're looking at. Once again, it's about a 20% chance. Let's look at it. 20% uh, chance two days and 20% chance five day. Once again, extra tropical, not really worried about it because it's moving northeast, north, northeast. So these are fish storms. Um, the only thing they'll be affecting is uh, ships coming across. They'll have to probably duck uh, south of uh, south of the of these storms in order to avoid them. But that's it. Um, before we get over into this area, this is the area I'm really watching right here. Let's see if something can get developing once again. It's elongated. It's a tropical wave. Just waiting to see if there's any development and if the National Hurricane Center starts taking a look at it. Then you have your main development region. Okay, so the way that this is, is that this box is for this uh, wave coming off of Africa. This box is for this, and then this box is for what you see right there. So this area right here is gonna move over the top. This stays right here, so this will slingshot this over the top of it. You have a wave coming off of Africa, and then you have this wave right here. Once again, the next two days for this area right here, 20% 20 uh, 20 chance for two days, out to five days, 70% chance. So this system has a good chance of developing into a tropical system. This area right here, over the next, over the next two days, 20%. Four days, 40%. So this has a medium chance of developing into a tropical system. And then coming off of Africa, um, two days out, nothing. Five days out, 50% chance. So within five days, we could have three tropical systems in the main development region. And then once they develop, it's all about a high-pressure system up here. Where does this high send them? Well, they should see, be sending them westward. Uh, if there's any weakness that develops, it could move them north. We'll just have to see. I'm going to get back out of this app. I'm going into here. Once again, this is a five-day graphical weather outlook. Omar, the other area up here, not really worried about. Then you have these areas in the main development region. All right. Ensemble-based probability of tropical cyclone genesis using global ensembles, and this is for starting now up to 120 hours out. This is why I think the National Hurricane Center should start paying attention, and they probably are. Um, so I have to pay attention to this area. This is the remnants of HANA that went in through Belize and Guatemala. It's coming out in the Pacific Ocean and will redevelop out in the It will become a Pacific storm. These are the Omar and the 20% area, once again, fish storms, not really worried about them. They're more extra tropical than they are tropical. So they're more cold-based storms, not warm-based storms. 
So not really worried about that. And then here's your three areas in the main development area that we'll take a look at. So even the ensembles are seeing right here and right here. Okay. And once again, another way to look at it, this is from zero to 24 hours out. And this is the probability here. A little bit of property here. Uh, I have to watch this area in the Gulf. I really don't think much will come of it, but there is a slight, I mean, slight probability you might have something in the Gulf. have to keep an eye on it. This is from the Department of Commerce, and they give out a two-week outlook uh, from the Climate Prediction Center. And I pay attention to this because I pay attention to the Reds, Tropical Cyclone Formation, or development of a tropical cyclone, a moderate chance, so high and moderate chance. I pay attention to the reds. Here's red number one, so a high probability of tropical cyclone formation within the main development region. And then if you move, and this is week one, if you move into week two, there is a moderate chance of development, and they also have something here in the Gulf. So we'll have to watch out for the Gulf, and we'll have to watch out for the main development region. 91L is uh, the ensembles have a jumbled mess, which it should because you have one, um, one uh, disturbed area going over another disturbed area. The ensembles are still trying to figure it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the Fujiwara effect is, is what uh, the models are trying to figure out. When you get one storm that interacts with another storm, uh, they don't combine into one. Usually, they just bounce off of each other. And that's why there's so much disparity in the tracks. Now, if you go into hurricane models and uh, major models, they have a general area of moving up to the west as the storm passes to the north and then slingshotting around. Now, whether this goes more west or whether this goes more northwest, we'll have to see. We're still waiting on it. And then the actual... Model intensity guidance, about half of it having become a tropical storm, the other half does not. Um, but if you look at this, there's more. Uh, it's more than half. Uh, it's, it's a greater chance of at least becoming a tropical storm because even the AVNI comes from the bottom up to the top. So your UK model's not hot on it, and your AEM, AEMI model are not hot on it, and your CTI, CTCI not hot on it but other ones are moving it up so chances are you're looking at a possible tropical storm uh, I love looking at total precipitable water because you can see the circulations in total precipitable water Omar you're a 20% chance but once again they're more cold core so they're more extra tropical more like a normal low but you can definitely see the spin of both of them. Um, here's this area, disturbed area. Kind of see, it's kind of getting better organized there. Not much of a twist, but still better organized. This is Hannah coming out of uh, Guatemala and emerging into the Pacific. And then your main development area, a really good twist going on over here. And then this Right here is a twist. This will be your next wave that will be coming off of Africa that has a chance of developing. So total precipitable water, you can definitely go in and you can see the where the twists are happening, where the circulation is happening. Now, let's go look at the future. Crystal balling with the, uh, with the models here. And let's look. This is the... European model. This is for forecast hour 240, which would be Monday, September the 14th. Um, when it's out this far, we don't look at the actual millibars. Uh, we just kind of look at general positioning. And if you look at the general positioning of storms um, for 240 hours out, one, two, three areas. The European model is seeing that'll be that could possibly be in the Atlantic. So East Coast Florida, you need to keep your your eyes open 
what's what's happening out in the Atlantic. It's all about this high pressure system right here. If this high pressure system moves south and a little further uh, west, then these will move south and west. And guess what? That puts you in a better position for seeing something tropical. Now that's the European model. Let's go look at the Canadian model. Once again, disturbed area here, disturbed area here, disturbed area here, disturbed area here. So four areas that the gym is seeing, okay? Once again, we don't pay attention to the pressures. We're just kind of paying attention to positions. So once again, high pressure system right here. It's a blocking mechanism unless there's a weakness. Uh, so one, two, three, four areas that the gym model is seeing. So definitely active in the Atlantic. Let's move on to the nav gym. Now this is only 144 hours out, but one, two, and it actually has the system developing decently, but you still have two areas with this high pressure a little further south and west. Definitely have to watch. Definitely have to watch what's going on. Let's look at the ICON model. I really like the ICON model. It is slowly but surely come, becoming one of my favorites. And here we go. Ready? One. One area. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five different areas. It has, this is at 180 hours, it has the high pressure more east and south, which would generally lend to this more of a curve up following the high pressure. But as you can tell, the models are have different positionings on this high pressure. This, this is what's going to determine the tracks of these storms coming off. And let's look at the GFS paralleled. Under GFS paralleled, nicely developed storm. And then once again, south, south. Here's another one. So there's three. The, so the GFS parallel at 120 hours has the storms more south, has a high pressure more north, but definitely has it stronger. And then you see the general steering pattern, which would be west. So Florida, east coast. I've been saying it for a couple of videos now. I'm going to continue to reiterate it. You're going to have to keep a close watch of what's going on in the Atlantic right now, because models have three, four, five systems out here in the Atlantic, and it all depends on this high pressure system right here. How strong it is, where it's at, and that will tell you the general movement of which way these storms in the Atlantic will be moving. You have basically three scenarios. You have fish storms that curve back out, you have something Florida East Coast, or you have something south in the Gulf. The more likely is the first two, either fish storms, or you're going to have to be dealing with something tropical on the East Coast in Florida uh, over the next two weeks. So definitely keep an eye on what's going on out here. And that's going to be my update today. Let's see if we uh, can, uh, once again, subscribe. Go down here, subscribe, hit that bell. Let's get the first notification of when these videos come out so you can stay informed and you can share it with your family, your friends, and your coworkers so they can also be informed. Have a good day. Thanks a lot.